Hello guys and welcome back to La Cancha and on the agenda today we're going to talk about first wins, we're going to talk about crazy games, big shocks, a couple of hat-tricks, we've missing some of them and as well because it's La Liga this season we have a couple of one zero to talk about as well and to start off I'm going to start with the big big news of this weekend and that's Elche finally getting a win, their first win of the season. How did they do that Oscar? Uh, by um capitalizing on the, an extremely poor Villarreal performance defensively. Like, if you look at all of the goals Elche scored, Villarreal's fingerprints are all over them. <laughs> and, you know, you know, they, like, give away for the first goal, some other giveaways that weren't punished, and then two absolutely clumsy penalties given away for Premier to score a hat-trick. Yeah, the first goal especially with Raul Abio, because we look at Raul Abio and we think of him as this super experienced defender and he just collapses into Cuenca and that's how Elche gets the first one. And yeah. um, it, it was just it was just sad from Villarreal because pre-game Setien said that he doesn't want Villarreal to be the first team to get beat by Elche and which is kind of setting them up to be the first team. Uh, yeah, to beat by I do it. I can never, never do that. <laughs> Yeah, I never do that. And, and you know what? Up there, I'll give myself some flowers. I sort of call this one. <laughs> I called this one. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're discussing it. And I was like, I looked at it. And Villarreal, they didn't have that. They didn't have a stellar performance against Rayo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you look at this game, and this game is a derby. And it's like, it's going to be pretty like heated up. And yeah. it, it, it all looked like the stars were aligned for Elksha. And I'm very mm-hmm. happy for them because, as you said, Villarreal did give them three of the goals. They scored a pretty impressive goal with themselves, Villarreal. But they defended super well after the game, they, after the, the three goals, and they didn't let Villarreal get a sniff in. Yeah. You know, I was just looking, like, between this game and the Rayo game and then their transfer window, I'm like, Villarreal are weaker than they were a month ago. Because you look at it, really has gone, and Jorgensen didn't cover himself in glory against Rayo. I mean, Peperina is doing all right, but then if you leave the goalkeeping aspect aside, you have up front, um, Morales has been playing too well, so that means yeah. the same three fours have to start, and then if you think if any of them get injured, Villarreal might be in a bit of trouble, considering yeah. they're still in Europe. Yeah, like I think Dang Juma is the only four that's left. They slept Jackson there. Yeah, he's injured until March. That, yeah. Which is tough, but the good thing for their for their sake is that they don't have to play European football in February. That's the one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on the plus side, you're right. If Gerard gets on the negative side, sorry, if Gerard gets injured, they're in a big hole. Um, mm-hmm. Right now, it doesn't seem like Chiquese or Jeremy Pino have that competition. For some reason, they let Morlanes go, and mm-hmm. Los Celso still injured. So yeah. yeah, the squad it looks a lot lot weaker, especially when you factor in the fact that they did lose their manager. Um, True, that's another one. That, but, but let's talk about Elche. And I want to give credit to, um, first of all, I know Peronia is on our screen, but first of all, let's give credit to Carlos Clerk, who went on a, yeah. a, a long run, like 39 games without winning in La Liga or something. <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot about that like by the end of the game because I was kind of like doing watching the game and doing something else at the same time. So. The thought came to my head during the game when it was 1 0, and then at 1 1, I'm like, okay, Villarreal should take it to, take over from here because they were creating chances for fun. But then Elche, you know, withstood the storm, and then I mean, I know we said we'll talk about Elche, but for Villarreal, I don't get why Paul Torres hasn't played the last two games. And... Yeah, apparently he's been out injured, so that's why he's been missing. Yeah. But... but he's been on the bench, at least according to Sofa Score. Yeah. No. I, I think maybe they're just trying not to overextend his injury. Mm-hmm. But let's move on to Elche. And they did something interesting tactically in this game where Lucas Boye was moved to the right wing. And I know you have a pet peeve about strikers being in the right wing. But that sort of works for them. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, is, it depends on the kind of striker. Lucas Boye is a striker that I know some of you might find it hard to believe is a very good dribbler according to his stats. So... He has, he definitely has that ability to like be a presence on the wing and carry the ball up and down, and also combine with his teammates too. So, 
Uh, that was an interesting um, this thing. That was an interesting change. And I also like that Elche were very attacking because he also had Ponce and yeah. Perimia on the pitch. And, of course, Perimia yeah. and Hatrick Hero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's very good, very good for them. I mean, yeah. it's a good way to start the second half of the campaign. And Pablo Machin was saying before the game that he, that this LJ team is much better than what they've shown, and they need to at least show that in the second half of the season. And this is a good way to go about it. Yeah, I, I think looking for like uh, before looking ahead for LJ, one thing they can do is they can compete the way Levante did. They can go down fighting the way Levante did. Mm-hmm. Right? Levante, I was looking at the stats a couple of days. In the first half, they had eight points. In the second half of the season, they had 27 points, which is European level, like competition points mm-hmm. for a, one round of, of a league season. And yeah. that's what almost led them to safety. So for Elche, yeah. they need to replicate something like what Levante did to have any chance. The thing with that is that it makes the relegation more painful, if, if, if you ask me. Like Definitely. if it does happen, because <laughs> it's like you don't, you don't, you just feel so much regret and everything. Yeah, but yeah, my part to help you. I, I do agree with my that their team, while it's the weakest squad in the league, the gap between them and the nineteenth weakest team is not that much at all. So, I believe they do have the tools to make a better fist of it, as long as you know they don't get silly sending offs again and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. And with Peremia, the sad news for him is he got a hat trick in this game, and he's like the soul of the team. I mean, he plays so well. But however, he injured his shoulder, and he might be out for till March, I, I believe. Damn, yeah. shoulder injury is really that bad. I don't know. Like he, I've like, never, I've never had one. So. <laughs> yeah, I guess as a professional, it's like really bad. Mm-hmm. Like when you, mm-hmm. the way you saw him when he went off, and yeah, you could tell. I, at first, I thought it was like maybe trying to con someone, but. <laughs> No, no, I didn't think so because he actually had a problem with that same shoulder earlier in the game. Yeah. So when he had an impact there, you know, they had to stretch him off. But at least he got the hat trick before that. Yeah, he did get the hat trick before that. And that, that was good for El Chen. The fans were singing Cisse Fuerte, yes, we can at the end of the game. And hopefully they can. And there was just some really marvelous scenes. Like, um, I think Omar Mascare was crying. And it was, it was beautiful to see. I really wanted to this happened for them because yeah. it's sad when you see a team that's so hopeless without wins and yeah. now finally at least they can say we won in this in this division yeah, yeah. well how many points are they with from 19 not like oh nine well they still have a way to go yeah they still have a way to go <laughs> uh let's move on because Betis, they had, given the fact that Villarreal lost, they had a chance to really cement themselves as like one of the big favorites for the Champions League spot. But they got outshone by Salta, and I, I feel this was the best game of the season so far. It would be if we have a better game in La Liga this season, it would take some beating. I think yeah, between this one and um, Girona three five Rosa said that the the best games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot but that. this one, this one, this one was. More closely fought, so I had more twists and turns. So I'll give it to this one. Yeah, it's it's like from the right from the get go. I was watching this game and I had a very good feeling about it because mm-hmm. five minutes into it, there are already chances on both sides. Then Strand Larson, my boy, he scores a brilliant volley. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then you're thinking, okay, Salta, maybe maybe this is where they do something big. And Betis, like with Juan, the king, he comes out and he scores. I think he, he scores one and then he gives an assist for the second one. No, he, he doesn't give the assist. He capitalizes on yes. I do's mistake. Yes. Yes. And then mm-hmm. Betis take over and then Gabby Vega just stole the show for the rest of the game. Yeah. What a player. Like he's, I think I believe he's just 20 and he has six goals this season. And no player under 21 has more goals so far. And this guy, first of all, needs a really big boost in his FIFA stats. I don't know what the guys at here are doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw he had 67 last night because I was like trying to play with him. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, that 67 is like an increase. I think he was 64 at a point. I'm like, wow. if this guy was at... I mean, I don't like to point fingers, but if <laughs> his nationality was different, <laughs> English, <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Oh yeah, he's such a good talent. Like he scored some, uh, he scored six goals this season. And some of those goals have been amazing. Like yeah. 
like the goal we scored today, or I'm sorry, yesterday was quite brilliant. The two yeah. headers take it away from yeah. the, the assist for it was also very good. Like, oh. we also saw some very good assists from Carlos Perez. I thought he had his best game for Celta. He didn't shoot, he focused on what he was good at, gave Miranda a Tory time. Also, look at De La Torre has been the team recently and provided a good assist. Yeah, that assist was brilliant, and it's just goes to show, um how much Cavallal has changed this team and the way they mm-hmm. play. Because under um, Chacho, they played more possession-based games, but this Celta feels more direct. Mm-hmm. Like they're still good with the ball, but they feel like they're always going to be... They, they, they remind me, they look like a Bundesliga team more than La Liga team, if I'm being honest, because they're always mm-hmm. going forward. They're always creating chances. They're very quick in the transitions. And that's something that I've seen about them that I've really liked from... How they played. Yeah, and it seems that Celta have made Betis their new team to tournament because Betis have lost their last four games against Vel- Be- um, Celta. Celta, yeah. Don't worry, they're, they're still tournament Barcelona. Uh, well, we have done the last game of the season, but hopefully, you know, <laughs> it, it won't matter by then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's talk about Betis because that's something we haven't seen from them since the previous ATM days about them being so weak defensively. Um, you mentioned Juan Miranda, and it's like, the first half of the of the game, I was like thinking, okay, this guy's doing really well, like better than Ab- Abner. Mm-hmm. He was going forward really well, but then you're right to mention, he got a torrid time, he got destroyed by Carlos Perez. Yeah, I mean, he got destroyed, but at the same time, I don't think he was awful. I think Miranda did, he had a, an all right game. I don't think he was like terrible, but it was just that Kyle Perez was very, very good <laughs> on the yeah. day. Yeah. yeah. And what do you think has changed so much with this better side? That is it just the game accumulation? Because them conceding four goals in a game is shocking since Pellegrini took over. Yeah. And that, this hasn't happened since like the early Pellegrini days where he was still trying to get everything across and, and you know, some players were error prone. But now, the problem for me for Betis this season was that they weren't scoring enough goals. So it's kind of funny that the day they scored three goals, they conceded four. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, Wami coming back and scoring is a big boost for them, especially now that Panda can't, you know. I think his senses of scoring goals are extinct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was I was listening to a stat and you know, like his goal against Hitafo was his first goal in like two months, and I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. I didn't think about that. <laughs> I mean, the two months this thing, you have to kind of look at it like this. We had like a month and more of walk up, so yeah, that, that is true. That is yeah, true. take that take that two months to take green of salt. <laughs> yeah, well, huge one, huge one. Yeah. Jose Perez, do you think he solves this problem for them? Uh, he gives them a different option to um, Borja and William Jose in the sense that William Jose and Borja are more like target men and Jose Perez will be, there will be more dynamism and movement and if possible, you could see him and one me interchanging. So, yeah. I feel like that will like give them a new dimension. Yeah, definitely would. But hopefully they get Abner to score goals because that miss. Oh, that really miss. Because when you look at it, right, they, that game club easily ended 4 4 to better, so even 5 4, like if yeah. they had just taken some chances. Yeah, yeah. In the first half, before um, Celtics guessed their second, Betis were on them. Like, Mm-hmm. Oh, Betis was, was going to make a 3 1 before halftime. And mm-hmm. Gabby Vega does what he does. Yeah. That's really how good the game was. And both yeah. teams just had their. Because like, in the second half, up until up until that penalty, I thought that Celta were in complete control and were just absolutely dog walking Betis <laughs> onto Mingeza, you know. <laughs> Mingeza and considering penalties. Oh man, his first game <laughs> for Celta, he considered yeah, a penalty. It was a penalty. I, no, I mean, he's he's had he's having a good season for Celta. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> it's just him considering penalties takes me back to the dark days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's certainly like really blossomed under Cavallo for mm-hmm. sure. Like he's given yeah. him a different role, more freedom to go forward, more like an auxiliary sort of right back, right center yeah. back sort of thing. But with Celta, um, before we get to the bat of this game, I just want to mention something for Celta, where Marchesin 
is injured for the rest of the season. Juan mm -hmm. Villa stepped in. What do you think about Juan Villa's performance and how do you think March is seen is going to affect Celta, given the fact that Diego Alves mm -hmm. might come in for Celta? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, when you when a goalkeeper can see three goals, you always look at it and like, yeah. <laughs> but it is that he made, obviously, some of those goals he couldn't do anything about and he made some good stops for Celta when Betis were winning 2-1. So, yeah. I don't know. He's, he, Villa has played and had extended runs as a Celta goalkeeper before because obviously that goalkeeping position is kind of cursed. <laughs> the only person that has really, you know, beaten that curse is Dituro. And I think they also linked with him too because Celta can only sign a free goalkeeper, I believe. Yeah. So. Yeah, and coming if you ask me, I'd rather have Dituro back than, than Alves. Because Dituro... I mean, Alves, I don't know what he has been up to in a long time. And the Tiro showed he was at a very good level last year. So yeah. it's been good to bring him back. Yeah, it will be. Now let's talk about the bad of this game. The ass-bass Oscar-winning performance. That's on Luis Felipe sent off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a bit of a reputa bad reputation there. And then just, you know, ass-bass absolute masterclass at selling the foul. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like at first I thought, okay, I mean, not everyone would think red card is Luis Felipe, is real Betis, is this season normal. But then when you look at it, I'm like, you have to feel sorry for a guy. And I wonder why VAR didn't like take a look at it because the Sir Grande, the referee, had a good game, but I thought the decision wasn't good to send him off. Yeah, and the ending. Was at least, if you give me yellow, because I still, I'm still yet to see like any real violent conduct that was like worthy of a red. I, I think it's the speed at which Luis Felipe. Yeah, the, the speed at which it happens is like. Yeah, yeah. and the uh, and Aspas was like, God man, he, he should be on Netflix for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, and the fighting yeah. continued like towards the. It was just chaos, like, like for something that was like a nice. <laughs> game of football, it descended mm -hmm. into chaos and madness at the end. <laughs> That's the Liga for you. <laughs> and in the midst of that madness, if Edgar connects, it's a 4-4. Four -four. Exactly. And Edgar, to be fair to him, was robbed of an assist by Abner. Yeah. That, that play to set up now was actually very, very good. <laughs> yeah, it really was. But let's see, let's see what will happen with these two teams. Next up for Celta, though, is Atletico Madrid and I want to talk about this game, like maybe for a few moments. Your boy Unai, um, uh, Unal, sorry, he mm -hmm. got the penalty, he backed off the goal. But besides that, it was a fairly uneventful game. Like Atleti got the one zero, and they they went back in time and they thought that they were back to twenty. <laughs> yeah, they thought they had um, um, Miranda, Godin, Philip <laughs> Luis, and one from that. But no, they are so. <laughs> oh, no, no, I, I didn't mean it that. Okay, I meant it that. Anyway, Sal scored the game winner the other week and gave them two extra points. And you know they've lost two extra points because of the handball. Yeah. Which at this point the rule. For, I mean, I agree it's a penalty under the rule, but then for me, how I am familiar with the handball rule is intent. I'm like, if there's intent, give the penalty or the foul. But, you know. Yeah, I, I think that's a stone cold penalty because, like, mm -hmm. the way, like, we can talk about penalties, like the one we saw it by the lead, and that one, the player's hands are more natural. Mm -hmm. But Sal makes himself bigger. Yeah, he makes himself bigger. And, so. and then you're, you're asking for it at that point, and that yeah. was, like, a silly thing to do. Yeah, it is a penalty. It's just, uh, for me, if I was making the rules, I'd be more lenient with handball. Yeah. <laughs> but, that's... you know. Yeah, same. You know me. I'm, I'm very lenient with my <laughs> record. So, so. Yeah. Yeah. And the other weird thing in this game was Angel Correa. Oh, like, yes. Uh, scoring, like, celebration to go on the bench was hilarious. Yeah, because it was when he, when he scored the goal, right? I was like, you know, I think he's going off, but then I'm like, that didn't look like a clear offside to me. Maybe they'll look at this, and then the longer they took looking at it, the more you thought, okay, this is going to be Atletico de Madrid goal, and yeah. Yeah, it was just a funny, it was just a funny event in the, 
yeah. rather than an uneventful game. No, it was very une- uneventful, and this just shows you like how much like the fine margins and the offside call because like there's I, I don't know the defender, but like his leg is training, mm-hmm. and that's just yeah. at that moment, that split second, and soccer mm-hmm. is funny that way. Yeah, because uh, Hatafi were absolutely good in the organization. They were all rushing forward to like prevent to like play whoever athletic player was their offside. Yeah. It's just by a trailing foot, which like you see a lot of teams these days, like the tip of the boot, like the tip of the bone of <laughs> like wow. honestly. This yeah. game this this game is very funny now. Yeah, it really is. And you, you spoke about Itapia having a good performance and the one thing about them is that Kike Sanchez Flores has been under severe pressure, he came out against Maximovic, saying that he doesn't think players like him align with the values of the club and are fully committed to the club. That's that's strong words for one of your players. Yeah, I mean, happy birthday to Kiki Santos first, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's not getting sacked yet. But you know, I mean, when 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 Imagine is seeing that other player, can tell that the atmosphere at the club is not really that good. And the thing with Tetaf is that besides the athletic game earlier this season, they haven't really taken a beating like that. They've just been losing games by the odd goal and like not having the quality to take the few chances they have. Yeah. Now, last week, I think I said I feel that Tetaf could be more adventurous in their play. Yeah, you did. But, mm-hmm. but I think they, they got the game plan right today. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. you was right. Because they stifled Atleti, like Atleti has improved, as we said, and they they had a more attacking lineup, but Hitafe made it very difficult for them to find spaces, which which I felt was the right way to go. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah, they got the points, but I mean, obviously against the teams on the top of the table, you have to do this, but I'm thinking more against even relegation rivals, they could be more braver. Yeah, they, they could. And... I think they, they did that against Mallorca when they came at home to Mallorca, when Mallorca came to their stadium. And mm, but that's, but since then, it's been yeah. five in the, and they were losing until yesterday. Yeah, that, that is true. That's true. But like, we'll see what happens with them. Athletic Club were also five without a win, but Sunset, the first hat-trick in La Liga, goes to him. Yeah, he's uh, about a year since he scored his last hat trick. So, yeah, a hat trick from midfield is pretty, a pretty damn good achievement. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's something I like about him, and I want to compare him to Gabby Vega because both of them have that arrival, that Yagata, like the mm-hmm. ability to arrive, like just to be mm-hmm. at the box and to score a goal and or that pace to get to the ball. And I really like that from midfielder, and it's nice mm-hmm. to see. A lot of La Liga midfielders like showing stuff like that, like Bryce Mendes for La Real as well. Yeah, it seems like this is the future of this new younger generation of Spanish stars. So, yeah, uh, more power to them. Yeah, and what do you think about Athletic in this game? Like, because they got back Sunset and Munain playing together, and I think and they score goals. Scored. What a surprise! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, moving forward, they obviously need to include more creative players into the team so that the absence of one or two people doesn't like completely mess them up. But when the, when those two on the pitch together, magic stuff happens. Yeah, magic stuff. Mm, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you, if you want to be more defensive, I don't know why Ernesto Valverde doesn't see Munyain as a left midfielder because he can definitely do that and just cut inside. And then if you want to play. Vesga and Ander Herrera or Vesga and Zaraga or Vesga and anyone else. You can also do that. So Yeah, I feel it might be because Munain lacks a bit of pace. Uh, yeah. Um he does he's not like that hard working off the ball like Berenga, but still you still have to find the best system for your best players. Yeah, I'm not sure about that statement with Munain not being hard working off the ball. Like he really does. Uh, not as hard working as Berenguer would be. Berenguer. Oh, that that is true. That is true. I guess he wouldn't track back as much, and mm-hmm. he wouldn't, like there's some balls like uh, mm-hmm. I think. And him tracking back is a waste yeah. of his own talents. So. Yeah, it, it definitely is. But like it, all all in all, it was a very very good performance from Athletic Club. I feel Cadiz they were good up until 
the second goal was scored and then we just disappeared off the face of the map. Yeah. Um, relegation expert Escalante scored on his debut. <laughs> <laughs> he scored a lot of goals for the best when he came in the oh, January yeah. window, but yeah, it's not the third relegation in a row. That will be <laughs> Oh he true, he got relegated in April. <laughs> It's like, or Mandela, but if he ever comes back to another team, unfortunately, and it gets ready to the game. Mm-hmm. God, yeah. But I, I like Brian Ocampo. I feel if Cavett's do go down, he's one player I feel we can play maybe for a Celta, for a Sevilla, or mm-hmm. yeah. for a team like mid level, like to like competing for a Champions League spot. Yeah. It was a very good assist for him, and if he keeps producing, he'll definitely be in the Liga one way or another. Yeah, I hope so. And the last thought I had about this game is that it's such a shame that Hosselu is Galician and not Basque. Because if Hosselu is Basque, this athletic team will be a candidate. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you look at it, I'm like, Sunset, while he's been playing midfield, he can also play as a striker. So and maybe he's the answer to our degree, just a different position. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Shall we move on to the title race? I think oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're done with all the European guys. You know, or what's left of the title race? Because Mallorca shocked Real Madrid today. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's the Vinicius versus Raúl and Mateo. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> this game was just a spectacle. So <laughs> because all of the like history, like from last season, like Vinicius telling Mateo that. Mallorca are going to go down to earlier this season with Rayo talking about like Vinicius' celebration antics and like playing around and then Rayo saying, you know, he like he won't want his kids to be like Vinicius and then Carvajal saying he's like to have some words with Rayo <laughs> and then today <laughs> God, like you have Vinicius pointing to the bad Real Mallorca fans are giving him stick, and then Ryan shouts the Mallorca fans at Vinicius, <laughs> and then he's like, "What the hell are you doing?" Yeah. We've not even started talking about the football yet because this is the stuff. And then you have my friend, I saw this like after the game. My friend was doing the cry baby gesture. I'm running around with Vinicius. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it. No, no, I didn't. It, it was just like the thing with what Ryu did is that 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 could end up badly for you because you don't do that at fifty four minutes when Robin Trick can come back. Exactly. Like I was like, you guys are got it's all fun and games now, but you can come back. Robin Trick can come back and they did get a golden chance to come back. <laughs> I know the the Palmer boy in a sense you said, you know what, I'll let you guys off the hook. <laughs> yeah, after the hat trick they gave him last season, eh? Yeah, after that hat trick that, you know, Mad- he didn't see Mandalorena this time. He saw a competent goalkeeper in Radkovic. <laughs> yeah. And that's been the key to Mallorca this season is that at the back they have a strong goalkeeper. Up top they have Morici who's like just <laughs> Like, as Abe Aguirre said, like, if you see Marucci coming on the streets, you want to run the other Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but he's such a competent striker, and I'm, I, I think Nacho got the own goal, but, like, he also... Yeah, Nacho got the own goal, but, like, Marucci's the presence there obviously contributed a lot. Yeah, and this, this must be Mallorca's, like, fourth consecutive one nil victory at home. Yeah, yeah, they've gone 600 hours without conceding a goal at, at home, so that's... Uh, let me see the last game they considered the home goal. Must be Sevilla. Yeah, it was probably against Sevilla. Yeah, and, and the two games they've lost at home. If I think, oh yeah, they've lost three games at home. I think one to Betis, which is 2-1. Barca 1-0, Sevilla 1-0. So it's like, they might have considered only four goals at home, which is like, level, like, closely competing with Barca in terms of goals considered at home. Barca's only considered one. One, yeah. So not that close. <laughs> not, that, not that close, but like compared to the other teams. Like. <laughs> yeah, they're really... Like, if you look at it right, Mallorca have a really... have at least one very good player in each um, part of the team. And overall, the team, like, really functions well, so, you know. Like, just... Their team, like, are doing what Getafe struggles to do. Like, they can defend and also make clinical decisions in attack that Getafe really maybe don't do all the time. Yeah, so is this going to be like a one-season wonder sort of thing, the performance that America is having then? Well, 
it depends on you know how you invest the squad invest in the squad in the summer and you know maybe what the owner's vision is maybe they want to see the team play more enterprising football how long have your gear sticks for around for yeah but yeah uh, I to Aguirre because yeah, when, yeah, when, he, when he came in, Mallorca were pretty bad. Like they went some some long run of not winning, and mm. now you can see them. And with twenty eight points, you would have to assume that they can get the forty points or forty four points, whatever is needed, and mm. they're not going to be in any relegation trouble this season. Yeah, I'd be very surprised if they were in any sort of trouble at all at this point. Yeah. So now, should we get out the whip for Real Madrid? What went wrong for them? I'm drunk. Well, well, when your only shot on target is from a missed penalty, yeah, a lot definitely went wrong. You know, the injuries are definitely have not helped. Like missing Benzema, missing Militao, because I think if Militao is at the back instead of Nacho, maybe he doesn't get as bullied or harassed, perhaps. Yeah. Up front, you know, you have the inconsistencies of. Rodrigo and Asensio, players who are capable of producing magic, but at the same time, they have these long inconsistent streaks in them. <laughs> like with Asensio, I saw this meme where, like, you see a small dog of Asensio in the box and they see a big dog of Asensio outside the box. <laughs> I love that, like, it's so true. Like, give this guy a free opportunity to have a shot at you and you'll pay for it, but. Yeah. More often than not, he's kind of inconsistent. And then you're looking at the guy to, like, be the danger man without Benzema and Vinny Jr. And then the whole stadium has really wound him up. <laughs> and has the, like, he's fighting his own battle elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's on the X taps about it. Like, whether the fact that, like, the whole circus about Vinicius has affected his performance. And he seemed to think no. But, like, now that we've seen more evidence of it, do you think it's starting to affect him? Because, like, he's, like you said, he's fighting another battle that's mm-hmm. not on the pitch. Yeah. Well, to be honest, when you look at it, I guess Russell said that he played really well besides the finishing, but, but one of the, like, he was, f- uh, true, and he was very focused regardless. Yeah. Well, if you look at it, his away performances haven't been as good as they were last season. Whereas I feel like besides defenders like you know stepping up the game, you have like all these little distractions and side shows like the whole Mafeo team, you know, Vinny was like he gave into like his tactics and got to yellow in the first half and was close to talking or diving himself into a second yellow. But you know in second half I thought Vinny, Vinny played better and was trying to focus more. Instead of getting drawn into everything, yeah. As yeah. as much as he tra- as much as he was humanly able to, <laughs> uh, still, all of these distractions definitely can't can't be of any help. No, it, it really can't be. And Nacho made a, a good point that the circus around him isn't any help. Yeah, throw, it's not it's not healthy for anyone. Yeah, I feel in all the stadiums he goes to towards the end of the season, they're going to. Yeah, he, he's, he, he's met so many of these on boats on bridges. And, and I'm just looking, cut his away. I know, that I know. One. <laughs> A little hate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's just, I mean, I don't know if, if, it was my, if it was my team player that was on the end of all of this. I don't know if I'd react differently or I'd feel bad for him, but. On the whole, it's just funny to see. <laughs> My own advice for Vinny would be to not get dragged into his side shows. Okay. Yeah. I know yeah. Madrid fans don't want me to mention this player, but he's the perfect example of how you deal with this. Messi. How many times do you see Messi get fouled and then get involved in like fighting or trying to fight everyone? You barely see it, right? Yeah, you can, yeah. I mean, that's an example. Sometimes you see it with Ronaldo, but not not as much as you see it with Neymar. No so you shouldn't admit yeah. it. Yeah, yeah but, but that, that's that's the point I was trying to make. Maybe like it's more. I guess the one one thing we have to think about is that, and this might be an issue, is the skin color. It might be there, and also true. Neymar that that is, might be there. Neymar is Brazilian, and it's like maybe that's just the way Brazilians express themselves. Like. Some players are super expressive when they get fouled, others are sure. not. Like, even someone like, I'll say Nabil Fakir, 
although it doesn't go after players. I think well, actually it really it does. Like no, Fekir is a bad example. Yeah, because, <laughs> no, I, I was just trying to give an example of like players who are very expressive about mm-hmm. oh, how okay. they get fouled and like players have different characteristics, right? But I feel for him to get to the top of his game, like he just has to like. Leave all these guys alone. <laughs> like, yeah, right. they're, they're not. They're not on your stratosphere in terms of talent. Exactly. Like, don't talk to them. Just yeah, like you don't like if you bring yourself to their, like if you play their games, they're going to lose because they're allowed to play that game more than you. No, but do, do you see this like drop in form for Real Madrid fixing itself when it gets all the players back because they started the season super strong, maybe thirty-one points out of thirty-three, but. Since then, they've fallen off a cliff. I, mean, I don't know if it can really be fixed with getting all the players. Because they've had most of them back up until recently. And yeah. even when they were at the start of the season, they didn't have Benz back for spells, but still were playing well. So, yeah. But at that but, point, they also had Tremaine. They had a proper mm-hmm. like, setup at the, in the defense. Mm-hmm. And so, and things were clicking. And yeah, another player who hasn't been that good recently has been Fede Valverde because ever since he got on this run where it was on pads and it was like kids in the ball from yeah. scoring. Yeah, <laughs> since, since, since then, then not, not a lot. The shots haven't been anywhere near the goal, or if they have been, they've been saved. And then his overall contribution to the game outside of the shots has dropped. Yeah. And I think. I think him getting dropped against Valencia was kind of like a sign that maybe um, Ancelotti is trying to shake things up. Also, I think another thing which really matters is that Ancelotti is more emotive this season. And yeah, I wonder like I never you like this is a guy that I think can be three nil down or I just make a comeback and he just raises an eyebrow. And now he's like arguing with referees and everything, so uh, arguing yeah. with his players sometimes. So. I don't know, I feel... Comments, like the one we made with Gattuso for the Super Cup, the one about inventing a penalty, like he's... You can tell, like, something has changed. Yeah. So, I feel... It's Real Madrid, like, they can obviously um, get the focus back, maybe, for the Champions League game against Liverpool, or the Cup games against us. Yeah. But, yeah, they do need to change this run of... This inconsistent run fast, and Recovery players from injury will definitely help. It's just, I don't think it's the only solution. Yeah, I don't think so either. Well, things might be bad for Real Madrid, but over at Catalonia, it's a totally different story. Barcelona are absolutely unbeatable at the moment. And at home, it's so difficult to score against them. They've only conceded one goal at home this season, and that came from a penalty. Rafinha, we've criticized him on this podcast. Like this, <laughs> yeah. this, was, this was his game. Well... Well, well, what? I'm not going to be swept away by goals and assists. I'm familiar with your game, Rafinha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, he's been improving because he also scored against Betis, but sometimes you still see that lack of confidence. Or, I mean, having important contributions in this game would definitely help his confidence because. He was still involved in the first goal, even though he didn't have a direct goal contribution. So I think yeah. the second half today, he was excellent. Yeah. The first half, the not... Gabi was amazing. Yeah, the pass for Gabi was very good. The setup for Kessie, whose pass was also very good, was nice. And then he he showed good instincts for his goal. I thought the second half was definitely a confidence booster for him, man. Overall, he'll come away from this week where we've lost the ability to injury at. Looking pretty good. Yeah, looking very good. And what do you think about the other players who stepped up today? Like, Frank Kessier who did really well. Yeah, Kessier did really well. Because losing Busquets is obviously a blow. And Kessier and Busquets are two different players. So, and Kessier coming in as an eight, so I thought he really had a good game. Showed composure when he had to, you know, defended well when he had to was... That pass was also very, very good. Yeah, for Trey yeah. Alba, who also yeah. stepped up. We didn't expect him to start, but he started in the place of Alejandro Valde, and he yeah. does first goal of the season, I believe. Yeah, his first goal of the season, and then I think his third assist. So, yeah, good game all around for, for a lot. I think this was a very important 
game for us because we've been grinding out a lot of wins recently. So yeah. we needed like a performance to like maybe scare people again. <laughs> against Betis, I thought well the game the scoreline doesn't show how good we were in that yeah, game. Yeah. I, I felt I felt Barca were very dominant against Betis. It's just the on goal, you know, <laughs> kind of made us panic a bit, but thankfully we were able to be <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were able to be clinical today. Yeah, even without Lewandowski scoring. Yeah, and with Barca, do you think this is like somewhat it? Like La Liga is in Barcelona's pocket and if they lose the league that's we have to question more Barcelona than Real Madrid. If we if we drop it from this point, you definitely have to look at us. But it's not over. There's still many games we play this season. Yeah, there's still many games. Injuries can play parts like I mean the way we played without Busquets has given me some confidence because we'll miss him against Manchester United and when they're barely done. So without those two players, you have to kind of change how you approach things. Yeah, I'm going to make a statement and tell me if I'm being deluded here because sometimes I can be deluded. This Barca defense looks to me like the best defense I've seen in La Liga in the past 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll Wait, I know, I'm not, no, I'm not laughing. I'm just laughing at how funny it is giving yeah. the Barcelona defenses I've had to see recently. Because yeah, if you look at the even the personnel, right? Kunde, I, I thought was the best defender in La Liga while it was a Sevilla. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rahul is like a rock in defense. Christensen is Chris, Christensen is like, uh, uh, honestly, Christensen has rocked my world. Yeah, <laughs> this so, guy. Yeah. This guy needs to write a book on how to defend. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, how, what have you been doing at Chelsea all these years? <laughs> I, honestly, if you, I feel if you slap a price on this guy, given the stupid prices I say around, 80 is fair for this. No, yeah. well, screw 80. Maguire is 80. 102. Yeah, I don't know why I said and two, but you get the point, guys. Yeah, maybe Barca can sell him back to Chelsea and that'll be the lever. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that'll be the lever. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, if you look at it individually, the defenders are really good and have made good performances this season. Even Baldi, right? We talked about his attacking, but when he, when asked to defend, he's done a really good job. And then the, some of the other fringe players in defense have come in and like, it's just hard to believe we've only considered seven goals when we've had Alonso at centre back at times, and he's not a centre back. Yeah, it's crazy. There's something about the system that Xavi's getting right because the defensive transitions are really, really strong. I know today they didn't play against the team that really wanted yeah. to attack and get on Sevilla yeah. to give them the width as well. But um, uh, yeah, it just shows how like yeah. things have changed because you look exactly. at Barca in the past, like you when they had like Puyol and Mascherano centered the him was in a center back, yeah. and PK is a, he's a good, well, he's a good defender. He's always prone to one error here or there, mm-hmm. and now it's like they have like defenders who love defending. Yeah, I love defending, and I ain't like more, I ain't more more like artists or stuff. But yeah, regarding the defensive transitions, I think there's a clip of our game against Betis where there's a, Betis have a 4v2 against us and then you see everyone racing back. I'm like, this is Atletico Madrid level commitment. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'll say the good thing with this Barca defense is like, before, one thing that they didn't really have in the center back area was the pace. Because like, mm-hmm. PK, PK is okay, but he's not really a super quick defender. But yeah. if you're running off against Abraujo, like, unless you were someone like Iñaki Williams or you're Vinicius, like... Even then. Even then, yeah. He's such a good defender that, like, he has that pace, he has that mm-hmm. recovery, and it's... The only thing that can stop that Barca at the moment is injury to Raul and Kukke again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Living fear of the injury to... Well, at least in the league. Yeah. We've dealt with that somehow, so, you know... Yeah. I'm somewhat confident that if we have to, Eric Garcia will do a good job. If the opponent is not super fast. <laughs> sure. I mean, I guess during the, I thought he played well. Sure, and sure. He's had some good games this season. It's just that when the opponents are of a certain caliber. <laughs> like when but he, he's still young. Be, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, when Christensen writes that book about defending, Eric Garcia is the first person to read it. <laughs> 
Because yeah. when you look at it, uh, Garcia is good at reading the ball, reading the game and like making interceptions. He's absolutely worthless when it comes to defending 1v1 situations, which yeah. he needs to learn from Christensen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's very good. But let's talk, about, let's talk about the other side of this game, Sevilla, because I don't think they showed up. Uh, I didn't see that Sevilla. That, that lineup. I'm, I'm when I saw that lineup, I cried. Because <laughs> I felt I was about to lose at least one eye today. From Sao Paulo, he's horrible. Yeah. Four defensive, sorry, five defensive midfielders. Yeah, Rakitic was like the main. Rakitic player. was a striker in the second half. <laughs> Honestly, like I, I get the idea of keeping it tight and then unleashing your attacking players in the second half. But there was, there was no players for counterattacks. That's that's the issue, right? Yeah, that's the issue. Like, you look at it, I'm like, the only person that's probably quick enough to trouble us in the attacking lineup is Anya Syria. And anytime he caught the ball, yeah, if he was even up the pitch, he's up against three people and we easily recycle it. So Yeah. Like, I would have preferred it if Sevilla went for a 3-4-3, where it's like they had kill... Nsiri mm-hmm. and uh, Ocampos with supported by Montiel and Acuna, and exactly. then you can have like as many DMs as you want in that area, and they just like crossing balls. Because when Hill came on, I thought he looked very good, like he was like making chances. But I guess what Sampali would tell us if it was here, and I'm speaking for him, is that you know what, this is not our league, unfortunately, this season. So we're just trying to not lose big and keep confidence. Well, they lost pick. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like if you look at their bench, they had. I think for I was even keeping losing track of the amount of attacking players they could potentially brought on. You had Brian Hill, Ocampos, Susu. I forgot about Lamella, yeah. and then Rafa. Thank God he didn't come on. I would have <laughs> absolutely lost that night, <laughs> but. You know, you have these many options. I'm like, okay, so as you mean you bring all five of them on, you're going to have a, a very unbalanced team by the end of yeah. this game. And do you see that thing with Juan for Dan? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's another thing I'm like, <laughs> the guy, like, like, did you write the map to um, Marco Polo's treasure or that thing? Because Juan Hotel was carrying that paper around for like five good minutes. Yeah. <laughs> It seems like they were changing to like a four, two, three, one. Yeah, I, I get it. That. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I looked at it. I'm like, I was thinking, I was thinking to myself. I'm like, okay, if Acuna is coming off for Ocampos, it means Rakic could go to left back. It becomes a back five. Like that should be simple enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, or oh, do you want to keep Rakic as a first, as a nine again? <laughs> It's like with the Sevilla squad, it's they just need. I know, I know they had some reinforcements in the winter, but if they do stay up, they need like Munchie needs to go like full Super Saiyan again this summer because this team is not balanced. It's too old. It's too slow. It's it doesn't look like a top team to me. I don't think Munchie is capable of going Super Saiyan anymore. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I mean, I wish I knew Dragon Ball more, but I can't make a proper Dragon Ball reference, so I don't <laughs> offend anyone. So let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. So we are in the relegation zone. I'm not seeing that's in relegation. Are they? Yeah, Back there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In the relegation uh, race fight. Okay. Fight. Yeah. Another team in the relegation fight is by the lead, and they had a strong start. Um, strong. They have, they've, they've not been a strong start since Kyle Laring came on, and Kyle Laring, like he's a big super sub because he comes on. In the game against Valencia, he scores a goal. In this game mm-hmm. against Real Sociedad, he scores a goal. And within 30 minutes, he's by the lead second sub scorer. <laughs> and he has won six points for them. Then, yeah. He's having an mm-hmm. impact that Aubameyang had when he came last time. Yeah, last kind time. of similar. And those six points will really go a long way for the lead to stay up. And yeah. it's also their second. Um, and it's also their six points against Real Sociedad this season. Oh wow, that's that's, that's impressive because Real Sociedad were on that big unbeaten run, and mm-hmm. by the league just ended it. And I'll say the good thing from Lauren's point of view is that like he's 
he's super big he's strong he's like fast like the typical stereotypical things you say about <laughs> <Sorry> about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but it's true it's true in this case and he was able to like be good in the air to win the ball he, was, mm-hmm. he had good hold up plays and he was able to like getting behind defenders really well in this game and that's what changed the game and i feel by the lead they really defended really well and they cut off a lot of the passing range <laughs> Yeah, I feel like Real Sociedad's injuries, which they bravely fought through, finally caught up with them today. Thanks. Yeah. And they go they go away next to Espanyol. Do you think he'll catch up with them there as well? <laughs> it depends on who they can bring back, but Espanyol being who they are this season, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, let's move on to Girona, because they were in action against Valencia. And yeah. watching this... I was, this was a horror show for me because Girona, it's a 1 0 game, and that might seem like, oh, Girona maybe squeaked it, but they had 18 shots in Valencia's box. They let Valencia off the hook so many times. And from a Valencia point of view, you know, we talked about Villarreal being the first team to give Elche a win. <laughs> I feel like being the first team to allow Girona to keep a clean sheet oh, is unforgivable. No, it is. <laughs> It is, especially when you see the chance that Musa had when it's one on one or the one. Yeah, it's, it's those it's those little things. I'm like, I can't really. It's not not to blame Musa or anything. It's just like this Valencia team is a very young team. Yeah, you're not going to get consistent performances or end product from a lot of those players besides maybe Cavani. So yeah. it's like, how can you really do there in a relegation fight all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, like, thank God Valencia. Mamar Dash really because if he didn't like they mm-hmm. might already be in the relegation zone because he made save after save in this game um and the thing that annoys me from a Valencia perspective is that whenever Valencia have chances when it's zero zero like they did against Valladolid and they did in this game they don't take advantage of it and if you're a team fighting relegation you need to take as be as effective as possible because you might not be the best team on the night but if you can score that goal and just like lock yourself in and get a point or get all three points, that's what's going to save you. But all, all credit to Girona, they look very brilliant. They don't look like a team that's going to struggle to survive because they have really good defense and they ripped apart the line, to be honest. Yeah, and they've made, and they're, they're one team that has really gotten stronger from the transfer window. So, more power to them. Yeah, I'll say them and Vidalee, because Vidalee, they brought in... Um, Matches and Honda too. Yeah, they, like both teams have made really, really good signings. And it's just a sign of when your owners truly really care for the club, mm-hmm. they're more likely to do that. <laughs> and in Valencia's case, he doesn't want to pay the $6 million to get another coach. <laughs> yeah, but that's, honestly, that's something that... Um, positive about because if Valencia gets relegated, they're going to lose at least 20 million in terms of TV money for the mm-hmm. first year. And for the second year, maybe if Valencia stay in Segunda, it could be they lose 60 or 50 million from TV money. So are you going to risk losing 40 and 50 million back to back for 6 million in one year? Think it's only think. That's not even considering the factors we've said before that Whatever coach is coming in, I heard Nuno Espirito Santo has to work with this. Yeah, I mean the squad is not a bad squad, no, but it's, like it's not like it started the season really well. Like they were flying in the beginning of the season, but it's mm-hmm. just it's it's really collapsed. Yeah, and it's 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 worrying because they're one point ahead of the relegation zone. And as you mentioned, we we can see a tap improving. Cadence, I'm not sure about, but like you look at what by the lead is doing, you look at what Girona has done, Celta improving. It, it looks like it's going to be a really tough battle. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like, what was I going to say? It's like Valencia are coming to a gunfight with knives, essentially, <laughs> because you have, you have to consider the injuries they're getting now. Yeah. And the thing is that when. Thierry Correa is not playing. It's a much weaker team. And then Gabriel Polista did <laughs> what he did to Vinicius. <laughs> so, yeah. He's out for two games. Surprisingly, too. I thought it was going to get at least four. 
I mean, if he fully connected with Vinny, it would have been at least four. Yeah. But thankfully, he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on to Espanol. And speaking about feisty, did you see the big fight between um, Abde and Pierre Gabriel? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I, mean, I don't think it's worth getting sending two of them over. <laughs> sending two of them off over. Like, honestly, these referees <laughs> need to emotionally manage games better. Yeah, they, they really need to. And um, but with with this game, I feel Espanol they really played well without Hosselu. They created more of a chances. Mm-hmm. Um, Osasuna, it's almost like they forgotten about the league. Their their heads, their dreams are in the cup. Yeah, it was a game that Espanol. Yeah, as they tried, to, they 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 couldn't have done any worse than what they did against Almeria. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you know, Lord Bradwitz scoring a goal and stepping up in the absence of us Yeah. But, yeah, the best of points isn't really too much in this relegation dogfight. No. Teams are winning all three points and are still 19th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy. And the, I guess the sad news for Espanol is that they did lose Montes to an injury, so they're been told that's not a problem. Ah, uh, that is a... That is a big blow. Now Cabrera has no one to hold his hand anymore. <laughs> yeah, he has to play with Sergio Gomez, which is a recipe for disaster. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, with that, let's look at the table and let's see how things are. Barcelona are pretty at the top of the table, but uh, Real Madrid are eight points behind them. Real Sociedad, six points behind Real Madrid. There's a big gap. Between or a small gap between Atletico Madrid and Osasuna, and if Rayo wins tomorrow, they could be three points off Atleti. That'll be interesting. They'll be fifth. Yeah, they'll be fifth. Three points. Yeah. Off. That'll, that'll be very interesting. But seeing how the table has gone, where it's like yeah. no one from the only Barcelona from the top seven won this week. Mm-hmm. It looks like if you're a betting man, I'll advise you to bet with Almeria because maybe. He'll do something. But Almeria are away from home, right? Yeah, they're away from home. Okay, so um, right away. So right away, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll go to Almeria to do something, and we'll see who's right in the next podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but as you can see, the Valencia just one point ahead of the relegation. Oh, down 17th. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's sad. Like, look at this. Like, you have Valencia 17th, Sevilla 16th. <laughs> In the past, it would have been Valencia fifth, Sevilla sixth, or Sevilla fourth, Valencia third. But our time yeah. has changed. These are trying times. Yeah, and even so, and the, at least with even with Sevilla, they have improved a bit. Losing to Barcelona is not a shame. Yeah. So, but Valencia are just sinking like a stone now. Yeah, they they need one. They need some something lucky, something lucky. And the thing is, well, who's their uh, next opponent? Ah, that's what I was going to say. It's Athletic Club, so it doesn't get any better for the last <laughs> yeah, It doesn't that, get that, any easier. And, and, and given how Atafi played it in Metropolitan Town, I think that might be a tough game too. So. Yeah. And Atafi Valencia, the modern day classical. I know, man. Relegation classical. <laughs> four, four years ago, it was like classical to get into Europe. Now it's classical to avoid the draw. Oh, it's painful. Yeah. A really mm-hmm. good ankle save thing. And you know what? On that like tough note, guys, I'm going to end this. If you'd enjoyed our podcast, please give us a like, a follow, a share. And thanks for listening up until this point. Oscar, mm-hmm. wonderful conversation as usual. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and adios, guys.